Welcome back. I'm Star Connor for Insights, and we will now be taking a look at my journey with Lieutenant um, Stuart Sharp as we actually looked at some products that people should know that are dangerous. Lieutenant, you have me out here basically in the woods. What are we doing actually out here? Well, this is uh, springtime is the time of the year that uh, people are going to find remnants of meth labs, and this would be an occasion where uh, you could come across it. We have people that mushroom hunt. Everyone likes to get out and take a walk uh, this time of year. And when you're uh, out about on foot, uh, you may come across some items that are uh, indicative of a meth lab, and we ask that you don't touch them. You leave them in place and you contact the police. The byproduct, which is the hazardous waste, uh, is illegal to have, to maintain it. Mm -hmm. and. They want to get rid of it, separate themselves from that. So they will throw it in the woods, they will burn it, they discard it somewhere, and oftentimes it ends up on other people's private property or on our public lands. And everyone enjoys our public lands in northern Michigan. People from downstate come up to enjoy our public lands and the beauty that we offer. We have a lot of sporting opportunities, snowmobiling, fishing, and hunting. And unfortunately, we have this plague of hazardous waste that's being discarded in our community. All right, so Lieutenant, we are out here, and what exactly am I looking at down here? Well, this is uh, what can be found on a, any normal roadway. Uh, there's this debris, what the normal person would think are some discarded bottles. In all actuality, when you run across a bottle that has a tube and some white or gray sludge in it, mm -hmm. that's a gas generator used in the production of uh, a portion of methamphetamine. Wow. So yeah. what does the tube actually do? That releases gases and uh, creates the actual methamphetamine. Okay. Uh, this would uh, represent what's called a one pot where the actual meth is uh, produced. And those black strips would be somewhat similar to a lithium battery strip. This is extremely dangerous. Uh, it's not classified as explosive, but it does catch on fire extremely fast like an explosion very violent uh, and if this was a real meth lab you would have to uh, burp it or release some of the gases otherwise it would expand blow up and when the lithium strips hit the air they catch on fire ignite in an explosive manner so this is what you would find very similar to this mm -hmm. next to some regular debris that some uh, uncaring soul has thrown in, the, in our beautiful areas uh, that is very dangerous if you come across something like that, contact local law enforcement. Right. In northern Michigan, springtime bring, brings morale mushrooms and, and hunting mushrooms. It's a pastime of many of our citizens, and, and it actually brings people in from other areas. And this is the time of year when this type of debris is, is easily exposed because the vegetation isn't high covering it, and people are out and about walking, and they're apt to run across it. They need to be mindful not to touch it, leave it in place and contact law enforcement. Right, okay. These are some photographs of uh, s several different types of laboratories, including an MDA laboratory that we had in Alpena County uh, and methamphetamine labs. These empty bottles are a Powerade, Gatorade, or a sport drink bottle. And they're usually used for the one pot and the gas generator because they have, they're a little more robust uh, than a soda pot bottle is. Uh, and you can notice there's some uh, very common items that we use around the home uh, that are used in the production of methamphetamine and uh, fertilizer strips and some Coleman fuel. Uh, there may be some lye and other uh, chemicals, uh, acids and bases that are present in this photograph. This would uh, represent what a uh, one pot vessel would look like. There are some uh, you know, different uh, colored formulations that are on them and they appear to be beads or what have you. And that in itself is extremely dangerous because it can explode or be explosive. Was that kind of similar to what we were just looking at? This is, this would be a uh, authentic representation for what we're looking at. Uh, cold packs are used when we have injuries and there's, there's items within a cold pack that are used in the production of methamphetamine as well as our pseudofedrin uh, it could be generic or any name brand, pseudofedrin, uh, salt, Coleman fuel again, and uh, vessels, be it a plastic container. There's some lithium batteries that are present in this photograph. 
we come across a debris, and much like the area we're in right now, I, in the last 200 yards, we've seen a dozen black garbage bags. And when someone may be upset and approach those bags and, and want to take them in their vehicle, they may find that there's vessels that are consistent with methamphetamine production within those bags, and they can be explosive within their vehicle. This is the type of uh, apparel worn by a responder from a methamphetamine response team, uh, respirator and uh, universal precautions throughout their body to, to reduce exposure to any of the chemicals. The fumes and the chemicals themselves are corrosive and uh, can kill you. Again, just another photograph with some lithium batteries and some blister packs from a pseudoephedrine, uh, some fuel. And another one pot, uh, one pot. Okay, Lieutenant, so what's some most popular drugs that you see in our counties that you cover right now? Right now, there's the opiate-based uh, pills, prescription pills, heroin, and methamphetamine are our biggest concerns right now. And the pills and methamphetamine are becoming quite prolific in our area. We hope that you have a little bit more knowledge on what's going on with the drug epidemic sweeping our four counties. WBKB News along with the Hunt Team wants to remind everyone to stay safe and contact MSP if they see something suspicious. Thank you for watching Insights. Insights into Northeast Michigan is produced by WBKB News. If you have any comments, suggestions, or topics you would like to see on a future show, please email WBKB News. This has been a production of Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation. All rights reserved. The furniture and set design for this episode of Insights is provided by Young Appliance Art Van Furniture on US 23 South, Alpena.